dear listener, more important than the legal advice in the disclaimer. All right, so let's get started with my unofficial title. Um, Evo, this is for you. Poppy, AKA how not to end up somebody's poppy in the mum. Um, basically, um, those of you that don't speak Afrikaans, um, translation, how not to end up somebody's rag doll in prison. Yes, we don't want to go to prison. That's why we're reading all of these things, trying to figure out what we should and shouldn't do. And yes, there is jail time for not complying. Right, so we'll go through a couple of sections. Firstly, we'll start off with what Poppy is. I'll just explain it to you. Why it's there. There were good reasons, and it is quite nicely put together. It's just it's years too late. Also, when it's being enforced, already said that, but I'll put it down as well. The minimum requirements for handling personal information. So when you've got personal information belonging to an outside party, um, there are certain things you must do to take care of the information and make sure that it's accessible to them, basically. And I'm going to go through something, how to be compliant. So it's kind of a summary of what you need to do in order to be compliant. Um, as a whole, it's tips and tricks so that you can always be sure that even if you were ended up going to court, you'd likely have made the right decision, so you should be okay. And then we're gonna go through a little retro um, using a real data breach, a local one. All right, let's get started. So what is Poppy? Before starting off with what Poppy is, I'm going to tell you a little bit about something called GDPR. So GDPR, um, 14th April, 2016 is when they laid it out. Um, made it available to people, to the public. 25th of May 2018 is when they implemented it. So this is not like Poppy, we, it's been, what, eight years in the making, and hopefully it's going to actually um, come to pass on the 1st of July. Um, and there are some similarities between GDPR and Poppy, actually, which is why I put this through. Those of you that have already had to deal with GDPR will know what a headache it is but it's got to do with data breaches, how you handle information. It's got all sorts of rules that you need to comply with. Generally, your organization would comply with it and depending on your role, you might be the one in charge of doing this as well. So firstly, um, there are seven things with um, GDPR. Um, you need to, there are rules laid out for the lawful, um, fair and transparent processing of information. So. Essentially, you must follow the laws of the country you're in, um, and it must be transparent. So you'll see these terms and conditions that you get quite often, which have been not dumbed down, but simplified for the lay person in the past few years, so that um, you should be able to understand it if English is your native or second language or whatever language you're accepting the terms in, it must be transparent. Um, Purpose limitation. So you need to limit what you're using the information for. You'll notice also terms and conditions once again. They'll tell you we will not sell your information through to third parties other than, and they specify which third parties. So this needs to be put down in um, in your terms or your contract as we call it. Data minimization. Don't store more than you need. If all you need is an email address and a cell phone number in order to use your service, but you're storing an address and you're storing a person's next of kin information and you're storing all sorts of other things that you really don't need, you shouldn't be storing it. Um, if there's a specific purpose for it, for example, life insurance, you would probably need the next of kin, but otherwise you don't. Um, accuracy, uh, you need to make sure that the information is accurate and that, um, yeah, basically it's not invalid. Um, storage limitation. Um, kind of ties in a bit with the purpose. Storage is more how you store it. So um, where you're going to store it, make sure, um, yeah, you take guidelines for how you're storing your information. So don't store plain text passwords, for example. I guess that's the easiest thing to say. 
um, protected in some way because that's the access to whatever service you're providing or website or anything that you're using. Um, integrity and confidentiality. This is quite important. If Even if you're not storing that password in plain text, if you are hashing it with a hash that can just be broken with, for example, a simple lookup on the internet, Google the hash, you'll find the password. That's not right. Um, you need to take security into account as well. Integrity of the data it must be um, genuine, uh, verifiable. Usually you've got audit logs or some sort of other way of making sure somebody didn't come in, inject you with some information and then disappear and then your information is buggy as well. Confidentiality, you need some access control, for example. You don't want your colleagues to have access to your payslip information, for example. It must remain confidential between you and either HR or one of your managers, but not the whole world. And lastly, accountability. Um, this also ties in with that order trail. Um, also, you should make sure that people are accountable for their actions. That's one of the things that um, I'm mainly going to be talking about accountability today, how to make sure you remain accountable, what to ask, what to do, in order to make sure that, like I said, comes to a court date, if you get called in, your hands are clean. And let's move on to Poppy as an example. That's not supposed to be there. That's, you know, you, you're not going to jail, don't worry. You don't need to worry about dropping this up. There was another image here, but it doesn't seem to be working. Kremlin's in my computer. Anyway, ignore Bert for a moment. Don't be afraid. Um, Poppy has basically the same seven principles. And in addition, there's a specific um, item mentioned in the data subject participation. So um, this is essentially saying that whoever is um, a part of, whoever's information you have must have been, must have given their consent for you to have the information. Um, this is like opt in, I agree to the terms. Um, a lot of the um, other acts aren't always explicit about this, but I guess this is the one thing that um, Poppy is very explicit about. Um, later on, maybe I'll go into an example of what you could, couldn't do, or maybe when we get to the questions, um, how you can opt in, how the contract itself works that you need to have before um, having your information or before storing information. But let's get into the background. Poppy's been going for a long time. On the 19th of November, November 2013, that's eight, eight and a bit years ago, it was signed into law. It was quite revolutionary because it had a lot of information about protecting, um, pro protecting data, keeping the subjects of the data safe. It was great. And they said, the likely the law was passed or it was signed into law. And the plan was they were going to sign it the following year, say that it's now become a part of the law and it's now going to start, um, they're going to commence with some of it. And basically from there onwards, it would go to the enforcement phase, but they were pretty close. 11th April, 2014, they come in some of the sections, not too many, it wasn't quite enforced, but it was the um, people started going on about Poppy. Oh, we have so much to do, Poppy, Poppy, Poppy. Fast forward many, 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 many years. I don't know what they were doing for all this time. All the way to 2020, so six years later, they said, okay, we're commencing with the other sections of Poppy and you have until one year, the 1st of July, 2021, until it's being enforced. This means that although the sections have commenced already, it hasn't been enforced. So basically you can't be sued for not following it yet. From the 1st of July, 2021 this year, you probably would be able to get sued. There are lots of things that you need to do, follow in order to um, actually for 
it to be followed through on, but yeah. All right. So, Poppy, what is it? Why? Essentially, the aim was to provide people with the um, rights and remedies to protect the personal information from processing. We'll see it's rights and remedies. So it's not just saying you have the right to have your information protected. It's saying something along the lines of if your information is stolen and the company was negligent, for example, there must be a remedy to it. They've got, um, I don't remember if it's a regulatory officer or regulatory. The government has a big guy, big judge type guy, that is going to say, yay, this was a violation of poppy or nay. You are just looking for money. You agree to the terms, kick it out. And they're also going to hold that information and try to govern it. Um, I'll get into how it used to work before, a little bit later with the retro. Um, it also prescribes the minimum threshold for the lawful um, the processing of personal information. Once again, you need to abide by the laws of South Africa in this case. GDPR would be European Union, Poppy South Africa. Um, yeah, it was, must be within the law, like for example, the ECT Act. Uh, um, what is the other one? The one that I'm always using in order to coerce service providers, can't remember the name, but it must comply with all of the other laws as well as whatever additions are here with Poppy. Um, it regulates the manner in which process information may be, um, personal information may be processed. Um, essentially like a checklist, you want to know what you can, can't do, may, may not do, etc. And it enforces your constitutional right to privacy by safeguarding your personal information from being processed when being processed by a responsible party. Responsible party is that person that you said, hey, go ahead and process my information. Make sure that they keep it private, make sure that they don't do anything that they really, really shouldn't be doing. All right, so big day, 1st July, 2021. If you go to that website, poppya.co.za, you'll see um, I pulled a lot of this information from me, um, went through the um, act itself in order to find more, try to understand why, well, just try to understand the site a lot more. So on the 1st of July, what do you need to do? You need to be able to provide access to the information of people. Um, if Evald, for example, contacts you from his registered email address and says, hey, I've noticed that you guys are emailing me on some other email address. You must have multiple email addresses for my profile. What do you have available about me? You should be able to provide that to Evald. Sorry, Evald, I'm using you for everything because I see your face like just shining me. Go ahead, man. I'm the worst consumer ever. <laughs> um, okay, so you also need to be able to provide information about breaches that might have happened. If you get hacked, if something goes wrong, um, you should hopefully know that something happened. You might not have the full details, but you should be able to notify the affected parties, approximately know what happened, because um, there is an investigation that happens um, during the process of when you're being sued or when a bunch of um, people say, hey, information was stolen, that whole investigation happens, you need to be able to provide information if there was a breach. Consent. This is as simple as a little click, I agree. Um, some sort of consent must be given by the participants or the data participants. There must be a contract. So. In terms of a contract, it's just something that says we will process your information in X ma manner so that we can perform these functions. Um, I know a couple of weeks ago, I have a Xiaomi phone, so um, they just updated their terms and conditions and that contract essentially stated that if you do not accept, uh, you will no longer receive communication from us. Um, there was a lot inside there as well, but 
not sharing your information, basically safeguards that they'll take to store it, um, why they need the information as well. Um, yeah, stuff like that must be inside the contract. Okay, cookies, if you have a public or website, or you need to tell people how you're going to use the cookies. Are you going to share these cookies with external people like Google? You'll notice sometimes you go to a site. Once you've visited that site, suddenly all of your Google ads will show up with cat food, for example. Probably be cat food once I've spoken about that now in my Google ads. Um, you need to tell people what you're going to do with the cookies or whatever you're using to track them, if you are tracking them. If they disagree to be tracked, you can't track them and every time they visit your site, they'll get this annoying pop-up saying, hey, please accept our cookies. And it will keep up and up because they're not allowed to store that you said no either, which is really funny to me. Funny but annoying. And then also mapping activities. So if they're going to map where you click, what you do, how you do it, they need to make you aware of that. What the purpose is and you can either accept or not accept it and then just not be able to use the site or not have certain functionality. And of course, you need to allow people to opt out. If I am really, really not up for your site and I don't want you to contact me ever again via email, via SMS, I can request that and you shouldn't contact me anymore. Um, just a little disclaimer, you should make the data participant aware that by opting out, they will lose certain functionality. For example, if I choose to opt out of, I'll take Alan Gray because I currently I'm working there. If I decide to opt out of all communications from them, what happens if, um, for example, my account gets hacked and they need to contact me, et cetera, et cetera. There are provisions inside um, the Poppy Act for that. Essentially, you would be able to contact them because it's in their best interest and you would have expected that they would have wanted to be contacted as well. Uh, so yeah, there are a couple of exceptions there. So, there's more. You have four months to do all of this, right? There's a little bit more that you need to do. There's a definition of personal information. So they, um, I think they use a count number um, for in most of the act, but essentially it's personal information. You need to clearly define what personal information is, i.e. identifiable information. Records management, I think like I mentioned, how you're going to manage records, access control, that sort of thing. You must make sure that it's laid out somewhere or your organization should do that. Um, right to be forgotten. You've probably heard about this before. Um, GDPR, when it happened, there was this big thing with people showing up on Google results and they did not want to be there. They wanted to be left out of all Google results for who knows how long. Google actually got huge fines for not having a lot of the GDPR functionality. Uh, it was in the matter of if I'm not wrong, a couple of billion or tens of millions euros. Just a lot of money, but people should be able to, if, if you're sharing the information in any way or if they're searchable on your site, they should be allowed to be removed from it as well. Um, obviously there are risks of non-compliance. I'll get into that. Jail time, fines, how much you'll have to pay. Um, Security information, obviously, take care of the information. I already mentioned that. Password protected, encrypted, possibly even separated. Like some of your data, your database could be on a separate server, more protected than the rest of your site so that it can't be easily added to. Yeah, I think that's quite simple. It's not actually that much. But wait, there's even more. Yeah. There's just lots of stuff you need to do. There's big data, there's things you have to worry about. Children must have a code of conduct. They've got these data subjects, they have rights as well. It's just really terrible. Um, yeah, if you manage media, it's way too much in here. Let me get into 
let me put it to you. How, what do you actually need to do? So this is just a couple of simple um, examples of what you need to do in order to make sure yeah, that basically your organization needs to have a plan in place, a strategy, some guidelines, and you need to know what your responsibilities are so that you don't hinder the purpose of the Poppy Act. It's a very important thing. Um, if you hinder the Act, you get into more trouble. Whereas if you have to comply, supply information that's necessary, you should be okay. Um, before we get into this, um, are there any like pertinent questions? I haven't looked at the um, chats at all. Anything important? So there are a couple. Um, mm -hmm. Francho Boeta asked um, about opt-in. So he said, so opt-in via acceptance of T's and C's, which we never read, is okay, question mark? Or does opt-in have to be more explicit, a checkbox on its own? Um, you have to physically opt-in. So um, legally, um, clicking on a button is opt-in in as well. So there has to be something explicit that you do, but um, the terms and conditions have to be understandable. So if they, for example, mention a whole bunch of terms that you've never heard of or that you'd never be expected to have heard, um, it makes sense that you wouldn't know what's going on. I know a lot of um, places put a little link so that you can, um, you can find more information if you need it, but they'll do something as simple as saying, we will not share your information with third parties other than those that are a part of intellect, for example. And there'll be a link going to intellects, um, third parties that intellect might be able to share information with. So that you don't have this big terms and conditions section. But yeah, you have to physically opt in. Um, it could have been when you hit sign in and it said terms and conditions, click submit in order to opt in and then you have to tick them off. But yeah, um, any other questions? Uh, Shazar, uh, Shazar just mentioned um, the other uh, act that you were perhaps thinking about was the CPA. Yes, ah, funny thing with the CPA. Um, if you want to know about CPA, just ask me at the end of the presentation. I've got something interesting that I actually wrangled one of the network providers uh, yeah, out of with the CPA. It's just yeah, ask me about that at the end. Um, anything else that there, is to address now? There was a question by Neo about uh, opt out, um, asking, mm -hmm. am I still allowed to use the information I collected about the person after they opt out? Let's see, you shouldn't be using the information. Technically, you shouldn't even have that information once they opt out. Well, depends what they're opting out of. Are they opting out of communication or are they opting out of your service and the use of your service? So if they're opting out of communication, I think you need to, you, you would be able to store it because if they opt in again, they shouldn't need to provide new details. Otherwise that's a security risk. Um, but you shouldn't use the information for anything. Yeah, anything more unless you opt them in again. Does that answer your question? Uh, Fortune's asking, is opt out the same as requesting deleting my data? No. Um, so it could be. You can opt out of certain things. You need to be explicit about what they're opting out of. Um, so a lot of the time you'll see opt out and then a newsletter is a good example. You have opt out and then it's opt out of weekly, daily, monthly, and then opt out of all communication. And then often you can even have an opt out and delete all my information. So you need to be explicit about what they are opting out of and preferably what the implications are. For example, if they opt out completely and delete the information, they will have to start a new account 
if you are working with points, for example, all the points are gone, you must make them explicitly aware of that as well. So yeah, implications of that must be laid out. Okay. All right, we'll take some more questions, probably near at the end, but yeah. cool, let's continue. In a nutshell, what do you need to do? So that poppy a dot zero z day has a couple of quick wins. First time I read through this, I thought to myself, it can't be that simple or easy, um, but mostly it is. So your organization is going to be the one providing for all of these regulations. Legal is going to be drafting the contracts, making sure that everything required in poppy is inside there. Um, you as a whether you're a lay person, whether you're a developer, whether you are taking information about people and physically storing it somewhere, you need to make sure that you comply with a couple of things so that if it comes to somebody trying to sue, complaining about you not following the Poppy Act, you should have your bases covered if you follow this. So all the legal lingo, get a lawyer to do that for you. Trust me, you do not want to make it too complicated. Um, there are a lot of companies that actually, oh, lawyers making a lot of money redoing contracts, terms, conditions for people, and they will have the right things in there. And they should be able to, um, yeah, they should have everything that you need in there. You just need to remember the following. Um, subsection two, I can share these slides if you want to make use of them later on. So you must be able to provide the need, um, provide information that is necessary for the purpose of the prevention, detection, and investigation, or proof of an offense. When you get sued, you must be able to provide enough information to say, hey, would we have known if something went wrong, if information was taken? You must be able to pro, um, assist with the investigation as well in some way. For example, there is a section that mentions that they may come to your house or your business premises and need to seize your computer, other items that might be uh, related to the case. Um, you should be willing to provide this information. If you don't, they can get a court order and just come and take your stuff and search through it themselves. A lot more work. It also leads to higher fines if you get found guilty. You must make sure that, um, yeah, anything that you do is required or authorized in terms of the law or in terms of a court order. So you kind of need to make sure that you ask the right questions when providing information. Um, don't give out information that you aren't legally obligated to or that might that, that isn't necessary. For example, if somebody got hacked, the information got stolen, one of your clients or somebody in your database, and you need to figure out how they got in, what information is available. You may, to in, may need to internally share email address, phone number, all of that information with somebody else in your organization. You are allowed to do that. Um, you are allowed to share it with a third party if you've gotten consent. It's an important but If you haven't gotten consent, but it is required, um, there is a way around that because they also say if you, if you, it, if it could be proven that you could have gotten consent from your person themselves. Um, there we go. If you are legally entitled to obtain a disclosed account number, that's what they call it, the account number. So reasonable belief is an important thing. Um, within reason, would, it, would you have needed to provide the information to whatever third party? Um, and reasonable belief that you would have had the consent of them. So obviously, if some of their money was stolen, you block their account, you need to investigate further, they would have given their consent to supply the necessary information, for example, if banking details might need to be shared with an external bank, for example, um, just make sure that they're authorized on for phishing schemes. The third party may have given you consent. Um, if it needs to be 
done quite quickly, for example, and you can't get hold of them, you can assume that you would have had their consent. Um, and if the information was in the, if procuring, in the, procuring the information was in the public interest, if, for example, um, there's a criminal, you can take um, heck, mirror trading, for example, not sure if you heard about that, but this guy went, ran away with some money from a whole bunch of people. I think that was probably the biggest Bitcoin scheme ever, if I'm not wrong. Um, ran away with a bunch of money. They had to provide his name, possibly, which areas he was operating in and other information. Um, so that um, people would be able to, um, yeah, so that people would be, would be aware of it and be able to work forward from there. Yeah, so that was within the public interest so that other people don't get caught with the same scheme. And what are your responsibilities? Section 16. Not too much in there, but quality of information. You must make sure that the information is correct. It works as it should. Um, yeah. The act itself says you must have, you must take reasonably practice, you must have reasonably practicable steps to ensure that the personal information is complete, accurate, not misleading, and updated when necessary. Essentially, what this means is, like I said, they must be able to change it, it must be complete, it must be accurate, it must be, um, must be correct, basically. Um, up to date and the party must be able to request that it gets updated as well. Um, reasonable and practicable, um, if you have to say to people in order to update information like internal um, employees, for example, of your company, must be able to VPN in from any location that they act in. Only one person has access to that VPN in order to change information. It's not reasonably practicable. If they get um, sick by a bus, if they forget their password, it means that nobody else can do it. So it can't be practicable. Um, you must have regard for the purpose of the information, um, how it's collected and how it will be further process. So this is whether you're sending to a third party or whether you're going to use that information to get some stats, send it out, do something with those stats. Um, yeah, you must just make sure that purpose is clear. And then um, if these are the unlawful acts, so if you knowingly or recklessly, without the consent of the responsible party, responsible party or the person whose information you have. You obtain, disclose, procure the information and share it with another person, then you're immediately guilty of an offense. Essentially, know what you're doing, don't share without consent and don't do it recklessly. When you get that phishing email, don't just send them, um, don't just send them information, um, ask about it. I'll get into that a little bit later, but ask the right questions. I see Sangha, Mosi, you have your hand raised. I just want to unmute you. Uh, Joshua, would you, would you be able to unmute? Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, it's just Peter who asked, should they not complete a form with good reason for deletion of data? So that's in speaking to the deletion of data. Let's say that again. Should they not complete a form with good reason for deletion of their data? They, they need to give some sort of consent. So if they're inside your site logged in, and they request the deletion of the data. Yeah, so you, you need some sort of trail, um, basically saying it, but a form is a good way of doing it because it's verifiable in some way. And I guess if they've got access to your registered email address and they're completing the form and sending it from here, you wouldn't quite know, but it's some form of keeping yourself protected as well. 
but yeah, it's, it's a good idea. Cool. Uh, Neo asks, uh, does collection of data through impersonal means like MAC addresses, not running cookies, still have to be compliant with the Poppy Act? Okay, so a MAC address is personally identifiable information because if you were to use that to track people, you'd be able to track their habits, track other things about them. So why are you storing it is the first question. Why do you have that MAC address? Why do you have all the information? Do you need it? If you do need it, you need to let them know. Tell them what you need it for and let them consent to that. I'm hoping that answers your question. You know, you seem like you are storing a lot of information somewhere and I'm getting worried, but yeah. Okay, cool. Um, if anyone else would like to ask questions um, using uh, your mic and so on, just raise your hand in the participants window and I'll unmute you so that you can ask your question directly to Ezra. Cool. Uh, two more people into the waiting room. Let's continue. Let's get to the nitty gritty of it. The penalties. Why read the laws? Right, so um, broke this down into three things. There are a bunch of sections that deal with the obstruction of compliance. This is one of the biggest penalties you get. You can see that it's up to 10 years in prison or fine, or both the fine and imprisonment. This is when you obstruct compliance. Somebody needs information they're trying to protect information, safeguard it, but you're just not allowing it. An investigation is going on, they need more information, they need to make sure that you guys are compliant, you're just not hearing it. You're like, no, this could be a phishing scheme. Don't just give that answer. Find a way of verifying that you need to provide the information or that you're allowed to provide the information as well. But don't just say no to everything. Uh, Okay, there's also um, these sections, that bunch of sections, you get a final imprisonment up to 12 months for dishing out information. So if you obstruct compliance up to 10 years, if you just give information out up to 12 months and all fine, um, that doesn't look so bad. So you'll be thinking to yourself, hey, I can just provide this information to a bunch of people. Yeah, it won't be a problem. I'll get my two million out of it for sharing this information. I'll sit in prison for 12 months. I'll be fine. Other thing, what are the fines like? Up to 10 million. You've probably read this. But depending on what you did, how you did it, and whether you were negligent, whether you were malicious, fines could go up to 10 million as well. So don't share that information unless you are allowed to. Okay, let's get into, I'll do this really quickly because I see we're already at about 40 minutes. Retro. If you remember the master deeds data leak in 2017, I know I was on that. Um, it was a Troy Hunt, did a whole big thing on what happened, what information was there where it was stored, he did a whole big investigation. It was quite intense on the whole. And this was the largest data leak recorded in South Africa. Um, yeah. It was Draco, which was the um, company that was pulling all of the information about people. And the company that leaked it or put it on a unsecure website was Jigsaw Holdings, they deal with um, real estate. And before Poppy, actions that were taken, they were investigated, I made sure to do that by the Hawks and the SA government, because this was big, right? They never really disclosed it to the data subjects. I don't remember getting any information about, hey, your data, data has been leaked. I went to have I been phoned and like Troy on site and saw that I was there. Um, and your only recourse was to sue according to the common law. Any of you that have tried to sue anybody in South Africa, 
yeah, good luck. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes lots of trips to court or non-trips to court and all sorts of things. Um, you basically have to do it in your own, under your own capacity. It's really difficult, it takes a long time. Um, yeah, that was before popular. So what would have happened with this if this was after um, it has been enforced. So this is post 1st July, 2021. Uh, Jigsaw Holdings, I think that's the name, they would have had to disclose that this is what was in that data, ID numbers, they had addresses, they had approximately 50 million records. Some of them were children. Um, if you notice, there was some information about um, children inside the act as well and how to handle the information. Uh, a note is that children um, cannot provide consent themselves and they need an adult to consent for them. So I don't think the information had any of that. Um, like I said, it was non-consensual. So I don't think they ever said that they would share the information with other people. Not quite sure where they got the information from either. Um, but yeah. Like I said, children's information was in there as well, and that needs to be handled differently. Um, they would have had to inform the affected parties. Um, like I said, I got no notification that this had happened. Didn't know what was available on the servers. Couldn't even find out what they had. Penalties. Um, so let's look at what could have happened. Jigsaw holdings up to 10 million in fines for them. Um, if the information was shared, stolen, possibly even used for, um, you know, like with your bank, they ask you what's your address, scams. If, they, if it was used for scams, the company would have probably been fined, yeah, up to 10 million for that. They were negligent in it as well. Like I said, they put it on a public server, no password just one big .sql file, boom, there you go, all the data there. Uh, they said that they were going to protect it, but never quite happened. Um, yeah, could have been jailed for up to 10 years uh, for obstructing compliance. So they were pretty hush-hush about the whole thing until it was exposed and the server was investigated and they were contacted and all sorts of other things. So if they weren't able to provide information or if they weren't willing to, up to 10 years in prison for those responsible. So this would be the person that uploaded the file as well as the people that tried to cover up or just not respond or didn't take action when it came out. And Draco, that's the company that pulled the information, would probably face up to 12 months for whoever pulled that information without consent. So we don't know if it was worth without consent. They probably said it was, but they would have to provide proof of that as well or face um, fines, possible imprisonment. All right, and that's about the end of it. Let's do a quick recap. This will tell you about what you need to ask or do in order to make sure that you comply. So firstly, you must have a reason for providing information. For example, these reasonably, reasonably why did I choose that word? Practicable steps um, to make sure the information is complete, accurate and not misleading, and you must be able to update the information. They don't say how long it must take for you to update, but yeah. Here comes the other good thing, availability they should be able to request the information within a reasonable time. Reasonable, big read, because what is reasonable? 30 days seems to be what I see for most places as reasonable time. The law generally also states 30 days. It can be up to six months at times, but you must be able to provide information. And now I asked for my information from Facebook and they took about a week. Google, still waiting for that, it's been more than a week, I think now, but they should be able to provide you with the information within a reasonable time. There's no definition of what reasonable is. 
um, always ask questions. So a question, who needs the information? Why do they need it? What will it be useful? And why is consent given by the person? I see pinging. Um, I'll go to that just now. We're almost done. Um, modifiable or can the person modify the info or request that the information gets modified? This is the data subject or whatever's information you're holding. Can they request that it gets deleted, corrected, and destroyed? Destroy, deleted. If it's on paper, you need to destroy it. Digital deleted. And they must always be able to correct. Um, where am I? Availability. Why do I have this again? It's very important. Reasonable time, people. They must be able to opt out as well. Um, for example, opt out of emails, other communication, opt out of perhaps certain sections if you still need to process the information, but you need the email address for an OTP, for example, or the cell phone number. Um, in order to comply with your security measures. Um, they must always be informed. If there's a breach, they must be informed. Um, what information is on your system, they must be aware of what's there, what isn't there, or what can be removed for it to function correctly still. And yeah, and that's about it. Yeah, come to the end of it. Are there any questions? I can probably get people to unmute themselves. I'll go to the chat quickly. And Joshua, if you can allow all to unmute. I see. Will do. There we go. Everyone should now be able to unmute themselves. OK, so any questions you can there might be a lot of questions, but you can just pop up and ask. I see messages. If you'd rather write, you're welcome to write. Yeah, well, thanks a lot. That was a lot of information. Like I said, those last two slides, it is a lot of information, but about those last two slides are the important bits about it, like what you need to do if you're not the lawyer or the legal person that needs to make sure that all the rules are complied with. Make sure you ask those questions, make sure you know approximately what's happening or what you're allowed to do. Yeah. It wasn't a wicked CPA story. I was saying I should just chat about that. Um, yeah, let me tell you a bit about the CPA stuff. Um, so I'm not sure if you guys know about the WASPAs. Um, wireless something something so mtn vodacom telcom they must all agree um comply um well the waspas those are the guys that allow that opt you into random services not so random because they're supposed to say that you have to um opt into them somehow for example if you by mistake click on a link on a site or some button jumps in front of your view and you end up clicking on it, they see that as an opt-in as well. So I had, was it MTN? I don't know where I was or probably some dodgy site again as usual, but I'd opted into some service, seven rands a day. I don't even remember what it was called anymore. But um, Basically, I contacted MTN. I called the call center, waited for the prescribed 15 to 30 minutes and got through to somebody. Got to the call center agent. Uh, while I was doing that, I checked what other things I was subscribed to. It was that one service. There was another service pending for who knows how much more. And by the time I got through to them, I told them about these two services. And their words to me were, well, sorry, you opted in. You can't do anything. You can't get your money back. It's gone. Um, I started spewing. Hey, CPA this, CPA that, according to the CPA. And then I said, just let me speak to a manager. They put me through to a manager and I explained what the CPA said. It essentially says that if you've subscribed to any service, 
but you have not used the service yet, you would be able to cancel. Um, this was a daily service. I had not received any service yet, and I let them know that. So I said, according to the CPA, I think I might have even mentioned the section in the CPA. I don't know. I was pretty angry. And I'm angry I remember things. Um, and they said, please hold. Hold for about a minute. They went back. They said, okay, we've unsubscribed you. Um, you will get your refund within 48 hours because that's what they're supposed to do. And yeah, that's about it. Not wicked in any way, but that's my story. Moral of it, um, know your laws. So when poppy comes about, know what people are allowed to store about you. CPA obviously is there to protect you. Know what they're not allowed to say or do to you. Um, if they try to mention the law, the act, whatever it is, escalated, get a reference number as well. Yeah, that's my little story. Um, Champion. Yes. Yeah, don't, yeah, Eval says don't mess with Ezra. Don't worry, I'm nice. Un unless, unless you're a service provider. Unless you take my money. I, I, I see there is one very interesting question by Jenna Dotfreer. Um, do we need people to opt into information already collected before 1 July? Uh, can you say that again? Cool. So uh, do we need people to opt in to information already collected before 1 July? Uh, if you haven't had them opt in, I think you will have to, yes. Um, it's quite explicit that you should provide them with a way of opting in. So it could be something as simple as uh, your service will stop working at this date unless you do whatever it is that you need to do. Um, for example, go to the site, log in, accept our new terms, or annoying pop up the moment they log in saying, do you accept the terms? You will not be able to use it unless you do. Um, I feel like it's going to be very difficult to enforce them, and a lot of people are going to have, they're going to have trouble complying, so we will likely get another extension, don't take my word for it, but judging from how things have gone, likely the best person to, or the best person to talk to would be a lawyer, but yes, you would need to opt them in somehow. How you do it is your own choice, but you must have a record of having done it. Um, any other questions? I see a, a challenge from Aram, AA Ram, directly to me, if you're willing to speak up about that. Hey, nice Afro. That didn't prove anything. He said his hair is longer than mine. So, uh, I don't think that proved anything. My hair goes all the way up until about a year now, I think. So, didn't prove anything around. Anyway, any other questions? I think you guys can all unmute yourselves if you want. Let's see what new message came in. Make me shy. Oh. Yes, yes, that's what I do. Any other questions? Are you guys happy? Guys, girls, people, participants? data subjects, all good. Okay, thanks, you're welcome to email me. I think my Twitter address is actually wrong. It might be at Ezra Jevon one thing, but you'll find me quite easily. I try to check Twitter, Twitter quite often. And there's my email address, ezra.jevon at internet.co.za. And let's do some promotion. You're welcome to go to intellect if you're interested in uh, Job as a software developer, software engineer. 
reach out to Joshua or myself. Awesome. Isra, thank you very much. That was, as always, very informative and thorough. Are you going to share the slides with us? I can, yes. Um, I'll put it in an easily accessible place. I don't know what that would be. But if you can tell me where I should put it, I will do so. And I'll put the link up on meetup as well. Yeah, we can, we can sort it out and put some kind of link up there. Thank you very much. This was really informative. I certainly learned a lot. I'm going to have to go back and revisit all my websites and look at all the cookies and stuff and figure out how long I'm going to spend in prison. <laughs> don't, don't worry, it's South Africa. <laughs> oh, yeah, the prisons here are lovely. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. You, you might just end up somebody's puppy. Yeah, and I'm so pretty. <laughs> yeah, you would make a good one. <laughs> awesome, man. Thanks. It was really cool. Okay, cool. I'm just out of interest. Are we going to share the recording with people? Um, I will get it downloaded. So it's going through to the cloud. I just need to get access to it and I will put it up. I believe we've got a YouTube channel. Okay, awesome. Because I had some we'll people try to get me, it up there. I had some people say they can't make the meetup, but they're really interested in this topic. Okay, cool. I will put information on meetup and in one of the comments. Awesome. Perhaps in the description, maybe as well. Great stuff. Well, thanks everyone for attending. I hope you learned something. And um, Ezra, thank you so much. This was really, really well researched. Um, I think you put you put our minds slightly at ease. It's not as daunting as I thought it's going to be, but it is. It is a lot of things that we need to consider, and it's probably a good time to start doing it before it's a panic middle of yeah. the year. So thanks a lot. Really appreciate it. Cool. Glad you found it informative. Now guys, reach out to me if you want any, if you want to know anything specific. Like I said, I love reading the law. I'll happily look into it for you. I think that was a bad idea saying that. Cheers, everyone. <laughs> Ciao. Cool. Bye, everyone.